Hello and welcome back to Rams Talk Podcast. We're here today after yet another massive home win at Pride Park Stadium. Blackpool came to town. They brought some loud fans with them and some really good football, but they couldn't beat Paul Warren's stubborn derby side. So joining me today to talk through a really, really, really important win. Uh, first off, we've got Jamie Page. How are you, Jamie? Oh, I am amazing. Thank you very much. Yeah, amazing win and also made all the better by those in the chasing pack dropping points as well. So happy Easter to all the uh, the Derby fans listening. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And we've also got Vic Singh. How are you, Vic? Good evening, chaps. Yeah, all good. Got another three points on the board. The march to promotion is still on. Let's go. <laughs> I love it. I mean, we've talked about Easter. That's one religious holiday. But there's another man who's uh, got another religious uh, event going on in Ramadan. Ibu Adams. I mean, Paul Warren came out and said he hadn't eaten since 4 a.m. Um, he said he was desperate for him. He's like, Ibu, go get a drink. Go get a drink. He didn't need one. He didn't need to eat. He, he doesn't need anything. He's an unbelievable player. And Jamie, that goal was amazing. I mean, we talked last week about how bad he was in front of goal at Northampton. And then he pulls that out of the bag. Where did that come from? I'm not too sure. I said last week, I think he was either going to get a red card or score. And I was so happy that he scored and didn't get a red <laughs> card. Um, yeah, it was such an amazing finish. I think, you know, looking at a still of that goal, both of his feet were, you know, off the off the ground. It was, it was like Di Canio, that, that goal that Di Canio scored, um, albeit probably not as good. But yeah, he definitely deserves it. He's He's been fantastic. I think yesterday... For me, he cemented his place as potentially our best ever loan player coming in. Oh. Up there with Leon oh Osman and George God. Thorne. And <laughs> if you want to name some others, get them in. But honestly, I, I think the reason he does that is because I just love him as a, a guy as well. Like, Don't get me wrong, George Thorne and Leon Osman were cracking players on and off the pitch. But he's, he's just got something about him, hasn't he? He certainly does. And and before we get onto that debate, Vic, I mean, we've looked at the goal, we've looked at the celebration, we've looked what it means to him. Um, he's he's come in, he's slotted in seamlessly. Uh, you know, he's one of the first players Paul Warren said he'd ever put straight into the team after they'd signed. He usually gives them a few weeks to sort of bed in. But he saw Ibu Adams, saw him in training and wanted to bring him straight in. And He's sort of getting the rewards from that now, isn't he? Um, as JB said, it's either a red card or a goal. Thankfully, he's got the goal. I mean, how happy are you that Ibu Adams has got on the score sheet for the first time? Yeah, I'm, I'm buzzing for him. I mean, I had the pleasure of actually meeting him at Moor Farm last week. And when I asked him that cheeky question of, uh, will, you sign a, a pre, will you sign a permanent deal in the summer? He actually did say he loves his time, yeah. But he has to wait and see what Cardiff say, so... There's still hope, but I'm really pleased for the guy. He's such a humble, down-to-earth guy um, who's just brilliant at football and brilliant at what he does in, in the middle of that park. Like I said on Twitter, he was the missing piece of the sort of jigsaw that we were looking for when we wanted to put, make our mount for promotion. So he slotted in, like Jamie said. It's 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 hard not to fall in love with a lone player, and he's just been brilliant. There's not there's not, nothing else I could say really. He's just been fantastic. He's really been what he's been a stalwart of a signing. Maybe signing of the season after maybe Nelson, but yeah, I love it. Love it. I'm really happy for him, and I'm glad that uh, his good form is just continuing. So long may his good form continue. Got it in there right away. There it is. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> If anyone from Cardiff's listed, he's actually been really poor since he's come in. Uh, he's actually been pretty disappointing. So I reckon let him let him go on a free at the end of the season. I think it's only fair. Um, but Jamie, I mean, you know, it, you can't understate how important he's been. I mean, you talked about best loan signings. Uh, we've got comments already saying Mason Mount. Uh, we've got another one talking about Vicario Tamori and, and um, Wilson as well. I mean... They were unbelievable players, and I think it's it's quite obvious they were better players than Ibu Adams. But when it comes to impact in a team and the way they've affected the team, you know, Vic said missing piece of the jigsaw, and I think he was. I think he was. We all knew we needed that holding midfielder, but I don't think we realised quite how much. And his impact can't be understated in the Starby team, can it? No, he's absolutely fantastic. And he, I think I said when he first signed, he, he looks like he does the job of two men. And, and yesterday he probably did the the role of probably three or four, to, to be quite honest. But he, he's just a, a marauding, just energetic player. And, and you just can't help but, but love what he does for the team. He does the gritty stuff. 
I mean, I was, I think I, after the Charlton game, I said I was quite surprised that he can actually pass the ball because some of those players normally, they just kind of, you know, break up the play and then pass to someone that can can do the the nice stuff, really. But he seems to have everything in his locker. He seems to absolutely love playing for Derby. I mean, he's got a smile that I think I said that Waghorn could smile and light up Derby for a few hours. I think if uh, yeah, if if Waghorn could do that, I think Ebu Adams could light up for a whole year with his smile. So yeah, he's just he's just an amazing amazing player. And we're running out of superlatives for for describing his performances, and he just seems to keep getting better. Um, yesterday was fantastic. I don't actually think against Northampton he had his best game. And I was a little bit worried that he was going to follow it up maybe with a with another poor game. But no, he's back. The Ebu Adams that we all know and love, he's back in that midfield. And, and hopefully he can get us over the line with his his uh, perseverance and his, his smile, I guess. <laughs> Let's hope so. Let's hope so. And one of the things we talked about in our chat yesterday is goal of the season, Vic. I mean, I've been trying to think back to some of the goals that we've scored. We don't tend to score many sort of screamers. Um, the only ones I can remember are Birds when he beat two or three players. I think it was Leighton Orient away. Um, I think Barcase has got a really good one from outside the box as well. We haven't scored that many screamers this season. Is it your goal of the season? So far, there's still a few more games to go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'd, I'd probably probably say that. You're right, off the top of my head, I can't remember too many uh, screamers. So a lot, a lot of the goals we've scored have sort of been like tap-ins or inside the area. So... We'll give him goal of the season for now. Never know, he might beat it when he uh, scores the winner at Pompey on Tuesday. Just putting it out there now. <laughs> but yeah, for, for the time being, I'll give him goal of the season. Yeah, yeah, I think I'd agree with you for now. I've got a comment saying Adams, Collins and Mendes Lang are all rubbish. Thank you for nothing, Cardiff. Uh, you can throw Curtis Nelson onto that one as well. I'm pretty sure he was at Cardiff. Um, and got released by them at the end of the season. So, yeah, we, we've got a couple of good players from Wales uh, recently. So, uh Wonder if they've got anyone else. Wonder if Aaron Ramsey fancies it at Derby next season or, or someone along those lines. Um, but right, enough of enough Fibu Adams. We can't just talk him up for a whole Oh, can we? We probably can. Um but, <laughs> um, but we've got to talk about the two centre backs because there was a, a bit of an issue last week where one of the centre backs decided to headbutt someone, which we were all very concerned about because it meant that we only had two fit centre halves at the club. But those two centre halves. I would say, are the player and young player of the season, Cashin and Nelson. They've been incredible together. Those two goal line blocks that they made in the space of about two seconds um, when that ball got hung up to the far post, headed back across goal, and both of them were there throwing themselves in front of the ball. I mean, Jamie, they are both incredible defenders at this level. I think they'll very, very easily make the step up as well. Obviously, both have played in the championship before. You look at them and they're just so calm. They're so confident. They play the ball out from the back really well. They defend really well. And they seem to get on really well as well, which is the makings of a great partnership too. I mean, how impressive have those two been? Yeah, really good. And I think we knew cashing coming into this season was going to be fantastic because we all know what it was all about. But with Nelson, I think we were saying last week that when he came, really the, the fans that were saying goodbye to him were kind of saying no not didn't rate him blackpool fans didn't think that he was he was much cop um but he's been absolutely fantastic and i think as a partnership they just complement each other really well um i think maybe the the kind of calmness that that nelson has at times and the calmness actually that that cash has at times helps each other out i think they just they complement each other so well um and as we've seen i mean looking at, at hopefully getting promoted this season, you can maybe look at that and think that they can be our two centre backs next year, and and it's not going to need too much change in 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 that department. Um, maybe we could tie Wild Smith down with uh, with all the rumours going around as well, and then you've got a core back there as a as a three. But yes, yeah, superbly impressive. I agree with you. I don't normally agree with you, Jake, um, <laughs> but I do agree with you so far. Um, I think it's it's probably Nelson's to lose, but I think Mendes Lang is is breathing down his neck. I think if if Mendes Lang does something at Pompey away, then I think he shades it. So it's interesting, but I think right now you've probably got to give it Nelson uh, Player of the Year and, and Kashner's Young Player of the Year. Vic, what do you reckon? Yeah, I agree with you boys. I think I think with Nelson, I think a lot of us were surprised at actually how good he was. Um, and he's, he's really been consistent this season. So that's why he edges it for Player of the Season for me. 
Cashin will get young player. But I think with the two of them, I think Cashin's learned a lot from Nelson. If you look at the way Nelson sort of orchestrates that back four, even when we're attacking corners as well, he's, he's literally dictating where everybody needs to be. And I think he's really helped Cashin sort of move to that next level, if that makes sense. I think we all knew Cashin was a good player, but I think with the experience of Nelson next to him, he's learned a lot from him. And like like Jamie's already said, they complement each other really well. That is a championship uh, centre-back pairing. And it's sort of like a blessing in disguise now that Sonny Bradley got that red card because um, even with the, even with the back four, really, we looked comfortable yesterday. I didn't think we were troubled too much by Black, uh, Blackpool, uh, other than maybe a couple of um, couple of scares at Sibley side. But other than that, I thought we looked comfortable. So, player of the season, I've said from the beginning, Nelson, and young player definitely cashing. Yeah, yeah, I think I agree. I mean, you, you mentioned Sibley there, and we've got to talk about his his, his partner on the other side, Kane Wilson. Uh, obviously, big fan of the pod. Kane Wilson loves Rams talk. Um, he's the first player to ever recognise us, which makes him, you know, a player that we definitely love a lot. So there's definitely no bias here at all, uh, if you listen, Kane. Um, but he moved into that right back position. He normally plays at wing back. People were sort of nervous about how how good he could be defensively. I thought he was excellent. I thought he was really good defensively. And going forwards, we all know how good he is too. And at the end of the game, when we had it in the corner and him and Sibley were linking up for the short corners and almost led to a couple of goals as well. I mean, Jamie, we, we've we seen all season, he sort of developed, you know, he was quite raw at the start of the season. I think he he sort of honed his defensive instincts. I think Warren and the team have, have done a really good job at making him a more, I guess, intelligent defender as well. How impressed have you been with Kane Wilson? Yeah, massively. I, I think when you look on paper and, and think that Jason Knight's going one way, yes, we got a good fee. And then there's someone kind of coming in the door that's been injured, that had a good spell at, at Forest Green. You know, if you didn't know anything about Kane Wilson before that, you'd kind of be quite underwhelmed. But he, again, I, I guess similar to Ebu Adams, he's, he's just got that personality and he plays with a, a smile on his face. I can't understand, and maybe you two can help me with this, but he doesn't always come across as the quickest player, but he just seems to glide past people. I don't know how he manages to do it, whether it's the low centre of gravity or just, you know, really good ball control. But there's times where he just seems to glide past people on the right. And, and like you said there, I mean, those situations at those corners, it was almost like he got his... You know, there's a saying, can't fight his way out of a paper bag. I think he could probably fight his way out of a sheet metal bag or something like that. <laughs> and I don't even know if that makes sense, but... <laughs> He's just he's just so good at, at, at kind of getting out of situations where you think, you know, you're, you're, you're basically running into a dead end here, Kane. What, what are you doing? But he, he seems to nutmeg someone and, and kind of be able to dig out across. Um, so, yeah, he's, he's absolutely fantastic. I think, again, you know, we've just talked about two players that could make the step up. And I think Kane Wilson is another one. I think if he stays fit, I think he, he's young enough to continue to grow into that right back role. Um, and I think he'd be a key member of this this team if we were to get promoted next season. I think it's interesting. I think the way he dribbles is is weird. I think it's weird. It's not like other players. You know, you see the way Mendes Lang carries the ball and he's all about power, isn't he? He's all about, you know, getting round the player, send the wrong way. I think Kane Wilson backs himself into a corner and I think he does it every time. And I think he gets defenders in a position where they feel complacent, like they're they're going to win the ball where they really, really think they're going to win the ball. And then he just takes it around them. I don't know how he does it. I don't know if it's it's some mental game he's constantly playing with everyone around him, but he does it so, so well. And and Vic, I mean, you know, we, we've talked about it all season, haven't we? Um, Derby have lacked players that can sort of carry that ball forwards. And earlier on in the season, we moaned a lot about the transition and how, you know, it just seems to be hoof, hoof, hoof. But Kane Wilson in that position, he carries the ball and he creates chances. And I think he just adds something that maybe we don't always have. To be fair, I don't think we've had something like Kane Wilson at Derby for a long time. So it's really refreshing to see a player with such good ball control and just such a good footballing brain. Like you said, he, he sort of does back himself into a corner and just gets out of it. He seems to always be a step ahead of what the opposition do. So he knows where the tackle's coming in and he just glides past them. So... It's really refreshing to see a player like Kane Wilson come in. He, like we said, he's young, so he's got plenty of years ahead of him. He'll make that right back position his own, and he'll give uh, Nyambe uh, something to work towards next season. If we're in the championship, hopefully we are. But um, 
yeah, no, Cam Nielsen's a breath of fresh breath of fresh air. Like I said, he recognised us at Oxford away, so he's our favourite player anyway. <laughs> and and I think he was also the same person to recommend Ibu Adams to Paul Warren. Uh, so if if people don't already love Kane enough, then he's probably behind Ibu Adams joining us as well. They played together at Forest Green, didn't they? they so did. so yeah, now uh, it's really refreshing to see and just hope his form continues long beyond. And hopefully his career is with us for the next few, four, three, four years. Well, I think both of them were in the PFA Team of the Year for League Two when when they went up. So, yeah, he certainly knows a little bit about him. It's like when Stearman was bumping into people in restaurants and, and stuff like that back when Rossini was in charge. Um, yeah, it's good to have um, <laughs> good to have somebody recruiting from the uh, from the inside as well. Um, but I mean, Jamie, we've got to look at Derby's defensive record overall. Vic had some really good stats earlier. And unfortunately, I can't remember all of the Vic, so you might need to jump in help me in a minute. But 18 clean sheets for Derby this season, um, which is pretty unbelievable. Give, give me some percentages, Vic. You've got some percentages. I think I think Wildsmith was, I think it was 35 games, 16 clean sheets. So we're looking at, like I think it was 45.7%. So that's the second best in the league behind Steven Nidges keeper, but he has played a lot less. So uh, that's pretty, pretty incredible. So we're keeping a clean we, sheet. Fifty percent of our games, pretty much. Pretty much, he's been involved in. And then I think with, I think is it with the Vickers? It was seven games, two clean sheets. So again, pretty decent. Oh, what does that say? Get, get that donkey out of our goal, joke. <laughs> no, you're joking. No, you're joking. If you're listening, no. Josh. Uh, but, but anyway, Jamie, so as Vic says, you know, they're pretty unbelievable stats defensively. I mean, again, we've complained about the style of play a lot this season, but we've scored the second most amount of goals and we've got the second best defensive record. It's all looking rather good for Derby up at the top at the minute. Yeah, it is. And I think what do they say that goals win your games, defences win your championships. And I think that's probably on uh, uh, maybe a, a notepad in Paul Warren's office somewhere. He seems like the the man that can get behind a saying like that. So, yeah, I think we've, we've looked really good defensively. I think Wildsmith coming back in looks really good. Um, hopefully he doesn't do uh, another one of his karate kicks or uh, <laughs> siving down a, a player at Pompey or, or wick him away in the next couple of games. But, yeah, I think at the top end of the pitch, we, we look like we've, we're have carrying a bit more threat now. We've got the likes of Washington. Um, Collins being back is absolutely massive. Um, I hope he can start against against Pompey. Um, that's my that's my personal opinion on that one. Jake, you might not agree. Um, so, yeah, I think everyone everything's looking really rosy. And, and the fact that we've now got that gap, it just means that I think Vic said in the, the WhatsApp group after the game, it's not a free hit because we want to go and we want to put a good performance in and and win the game at Pompey but if we end up losing it's not the end of the world whereas had somebody else like Peterborough or a Bolton won at the weekend they'd have been right down our neck so things are looking are looking really good we still want to continue to build on performances play better because I still don't think we're fifth gear we're probably not even fourth gear um but we've got that that kind of cushion now to, to third place which means that we can maybe enjoy Portsmouth away. I don't know about that. I better enjoy it. <laughs> We're going that far. <laughs> We've got to at least get something for it. Um, but, I mean, we've got a comment already about Jamie's unwarranted hatred of Connor Washington, Vic. Um, poor poor Connor. He'll be crying himself to sleep at night knowing, knowing Jamie doesn't rate him. I mean, I thought he did all right yesterday. I thought he did okay. First start back from injury. Um, got really unlucky, I thought, with that one-on-one. Uh, carried the ball 60, 70 yards after winning it. Mendes Lang's ball over the top. Ran through on goal, and if not for a really good save, would have capped off a decent performance with a goal. But Jamie says he wants Collins back in. I thought Collins did all right. Didn't threaten at all, but he did his defensive work quite well. Who are you starting? I mean, I'll throw Waggle into the mix as well. Why not? I know it won't be him, but who are you starting on Tuesday? Well, I know Waggle's on the bench. He definitely ain't starting. <laughs> but um, <laughs> for me, for me, I'd, I'd start Washington. I thought he was pretty good yesterday. All that was missing from his performance was a goal. I thought he, he sort of pressurised their defence really while he ran down the channels. And uh, he was just unlucky with that one-on-one. I mean, I got a better view, so I thought he should have scored it, but like like I said, it was, a, it was a good save. So I'd start with Washington, and if it is nil-nil, bring Collins on with about 25, 30 to go. 
Um, but yeah, no, uh, we have to remember that all these strikers are coming back from injury, so so a lot of them are going to be a bit rusty. They probably will miss, well, unless you're back on, you probably will miss it, the, the the opportunities in front of goal. So I'd start with Wash and then bring Collins on afterwards. Yeah, I think I'd I'd probably do the same as well. And did you notice? Um, I don't know if Jamie would have seen it, uh, but Vic, you might have seen it when after we scored and they took kick off, um, and Washington pressed into the corner and their fullback stepped across him and he just bodied him about twenty yards. And it was about five ten minutes afterwards. The fullback was still complaining to the lino about it <laughs> because he just completely flattened him. It was like that Chris Martin one against Chef Wednesday from a few years ago as well, which is. Uh, it's good to see. Jamie, I know your answer, but I'll ask you anyway. Go on. Yeah, well, I'm not not a Washington fan. I just think that, for me, Collins just offers a little bit more. I think Collins coming back, it's meant to be. So I want to see him. I want to see him start. I don't want it to be the case that, you know, we we have to wait around for another couple of games until he's really needed until um, he gets back in. So for me, I'd start, I'd start Collins. I don't think that Washington did enough to keep the shirt. I think if had he scored, potentially, I think you probably could have said, yeah, you you, you need to start him. But I think for me, Colin starts against Pompey. Let's see how fit he is. Let's see what he does. And you've got to remember, yes, we've got the Saturday off, but these games are so, I guess, they're, they're very energy wearing and they're also um, quite mentally wearing as well. So I think if we can utilise all of them, then we've got a chance of, of hopefully getting across the line. Who knows? JJ could be back as well. I, I don't know where that's kind of gathered pace. I think Warren said it in the press, didn't he, yeah. to say that he might be about. Um, but yeah, I mean, it'd be, it'd be great to see him before the end of the season as well. I mean, imagine a bench of, uh, well, you wouldn't be able to have a bench of uh, Gale, Washington, JJ. Be and on the pitch, mate. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Very true. Um but yeah, those forward options, if they're all back for maybe the last three, I think that that's going to be interesting to see how Warren kind of ranks them, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. And I can tell you, Dwight Gale's at the top of that list. Um, I really don't think that's in any doubt. Uh, but Vic, uh, we've got a comment from Johan asking about uh, Corey Blackett-Taylor. Now, we haven't really seen a lot from Blackett-Taylor, had we, since he, he came in from Charlton, obviously had a hamstring injury and then a groin injury. Um, yet, he came in yesterday, started the game. You knew that already because apparently you just go to Moore Farm and ask Paul Warren loads of questions. <laughs> um, and I thought he was really good. He really impressed me. I thought he carried the ball really well. I think defensively he's still a little bit shaky, but that's to be expected. Even Warren picked up on that and said he's still learning that side of his game. But he was good. And he, he, he showed exactly what we wanted from him when he signed, didn't he? Yeah, it was a good performance from uh, CBT. He was probably our most threatening player in that first half. Uh, he cuts inside really well. He got a few shots off. Uh, he beat his man, and the pace is just raw. So, you know, you know what you're going to get with CBT, and it's nice to see him sort of have a good performance or something he can build on now for the next five, six games that we got left. Sorry, five games. So yeah, it's good to see that he's picking up a little bit of form. I mean, if we can maybe get Mendes back out on the right, and then you just look at that two, two wingers. Just it's just pure pace and power. Mm. And that'll just that will scare any defense. So it's good to see um CBT settling in well. Um yeah, like we said, we know the defensive work's gonna take a bit of time, but at this moment in time it's all about trying to get the ball into the back of the net and getting the three points. So if, if CBT can contribute to that then um then we're on to a good thing here. But yeah, he had a, he had a good game for me yesterday and um hopefully he can continue that. That's so so. I mean Warren said, didn't he, that it took Mendes Lang six months to get used to the sort of pressure it put on his body playing the way he wants him to play. So if Blackett Taylor at the start of next season can play like Mendes Lang's playing, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? I think we'd be a quite a scary force in whatever division we're in. Um, but Jamie, I mean, we, we talk already about the back four. We talked already about potentially playing a back five. If you're going to pick between the two, if or when Sonny Bradley comes back, I know it's a few games away. Do we stick with that back four or do we change it to the five? No, I think we've got to stick to a four. But what I would say is dependent on whether Elder is fit on Tuesday. It's Tuesday, isn't it? I'm losing track of days. It feels like a Sunday. I'm sat here thinking it's a Sunday. <laughs> um, but I think if Elder's fit for Pompey, I'd start Elder. 
just because I think it just gives us a little bit more defensively. If Kane goes and, and pushes on, then you've got the option to kind of keep Elder back. And I think actually defensively, Elder's obviously better than um, than Sibley, which, uh, you know, I, I don't necessarily think Sibley had a bad game yesterday. I just think it helps the, the balance if, if Elder's there. But I think for a four for me, I don't think Sonny Bradley plays again this season. Um, I don't think he gets into the squad either. If I'm if I'm honest, um, the so, anger is yeah, still yeah. there. The <laughs> anger is still yeah, it's still there. I'm it's trying still to livid. <laughs> well, well, I was host last week, so I didn't really get to go fully in <laughs> on what I thought. So yeah, I won't, I won't, I won't, uh, I won't bore everyone with that. But um, yeah, I, I think play the four. It looks like it works. So let's keep it and and see how it goes Tuesday. But I mean that that's a massive game, massive test. Let let's really see what we're all about on on Tuesday. Well, that's it, Vic. I mean, just to sort of, I maybe go with what Jamie said. People have talked about potentially having Elder in a back three, and having Sibley at left wing back with Elder left side and centre back. I think you probably end up with with Cashin on the right and Nelson in the middle because that's the weird thing we seem to do when we play someone else on the left side of centre back. Um, but again, I, I guess that's the question to you, Vic. You know, when when Sonny Bradley is back, would you have him back in the team, or or would you do what Jamie would do and and lock him away? <laughs> you know, it, I think it just depends on the opposition. I think if we're gonna go, if we're gonna go man for man, then Paul decides to go with that three, the back three. Then obviously you'd stick Sonny straight in. But for me, at the minute, I'd rather see a back four. Uh, I'm quite happy just to maybe put Elder ahead of Sibley. I thought. Sibley was okay yesterday, but I just think the aerial duels he's going to lose, especially against Pompey. I think if Bishop sticks onto him, then we could be in for a long night on Tuesday. But um, yeah, I'd stick with the back four when Sonny Bradley's available. Um, he's got he's got to earn it now, isn't he? He's got to show that he made that mistake and he, he's really repenting it and he wants to be back in the side because this could be a potentially special time for the club. So everybody wants to be involved. Um, I think it just literally will depend on the the teams that we play on the day so it'll all be Paul Warren's decisions I'll ask him when I go to Moor Farm again <laughs> but um, nah, I'll, I'll stick with the back four for now That's a good one, we've got a comment from David Bloggs who I thought for the whole thing is either really confused or is having a laugh and I think he's having a laugh because he's put, I get Jeremy Bossacota in for the Pobby game, now that is a name I've not heard for ages um, I'm sure Lionel Ainsworth and Theo Street would be well up for that one as well. That's that's a reference for, I think, probably my <laughs> my age group, uh, maybe more than any others. Um, they were all players in our youth academy that really did not go very far with us. Uh, although Lionel Ainsworth actually did quite well with Shrewsbury. So there we go. There's there's a fact that no one will care about. Um, but I mean, we've got to look at we've got to look at the running uh, that we've got. Um, you know, we've talked about it already. Portsmouth, obviously, massive game. Wickham, another huge game, Leighton Orient, and then we've got Cambridge. And then very last game of the season, we've got Carlisle, which I was incredibly confident about until yesterday, uh, where suddenly they their centre-half scored a hat-trick as they beat Peterborough, which was nice. I mean, we, we want to talk about this, didn't we, Jamie? Because the run-ins can be really interesting. Um, I actually had Peterborough down to win or draw every single game until the end of the season. They've got and lost the first one to the worst team in the league. Um, no disrespect to Carlisle. But I mean, it's it's crazy, isn't it? We we don't know what can happen. Things can change so quickly. How do you see it going? I mean, that's a, a key example of anyone can beat anyone in this league. And I think Vic was saying that after Northampton when I was spitting feathers. Vic was like, "Look, just calm yourself down. Anyone can beat anyone in this league. There's the a long way. To, there's, yeah, there's a long way to go. Long may it continue." And Vic was right. And I think in the comments, everyone says Vic's right all the time. So, yeah, I, I back the comments on that one. But, yeah, for me, the, the next two are massive um, because I think, obviously, Pompey is, is going to be a tough place to go and get a result. And I'm just worried how our tired brains and bodies are going to go there and, and, and try and play for a point, maybe. If we get, I mean, if, if we got three there, I think you could maybe... Uh, maybe say we're we're almost there. We've got a foot in the championship if we go and, and get a win there. But I'd definitely take a point. My worry is Wickham because I think they will be bang up for it. We've obviously had that bit of, uh, if you want to say banter or I'm not sure if it's banter hatred. really on, on both. So yeah, I, I don't <laughs> think you can call it hatred. It's somewhere in between banter and hatred, I guess. But 
you know, with the things that happened through, um, obviously the their owner wanting to come after us in our in our worst state possible. Um, that that still kind of lives long in the the derby minds, and I think also just gives Wickham someone to worry about in the division with them, I guess. So. Yeah, I think they'll be bang up for that and I think they'll want to spoil the party. So the next two are massive. I think I said to myself, if we can get three points, I'd be happy out of those two. Um, where they come from, I don't really know. But then we've got hopefully Orient with nothing to play for because obviously they lost to Lincoln yesterday. They're probably going to have to be um, faultless to, to get in the playoffs. And then Cambridge away and Carlisle. Cambridge obviously got something to play for, one yesterday. Um, so they potentially could need a result when we go there. So by no means easy, but I feel a lot more confident about our running now after the results yesterday. Yeah, so I mean, I mean I'm just looking at the position of the, the teams in the league, obviously Portsmouth being top, and then you have to scroll a, a fair amount down before you get to Leighton Orient in 10th, uh, scroll a bit further to get Wickham in 13th, Scroll a little bit further to get uh, Cambridge in 19th. And then you've got Carlisle in 24th. I mean, when you look at that running Vic, we've got one game, which again is, it could go either way. The Pompey game depends which Derby and which Pol Portsmouth turn up. They've only lost four games all season. But then the rest of the games are very winnable. And I would say dangerously winnable because <laughs> when Derby comes to a game that is winnable, we tend not to win. Um, so how are you feeling going into the, the final running? Um, very confident. I think with the way the results went yesterday, um, we got our win and then everybody else sort of dropped points. It's put us in a really good position now. So even if all these teams do win their games in hand, we're, I think, at least minimum three points clear of Bolton, four points clear of the others. So we've got that cushion behind us now. Um, like you said, Port Portsmouth, obviously, if we get the win, great. I'd take a point there. Wickham's an interesting one, only because they've got that final uh, three or four days before we play them. So, depending on how that goes, they'll either be licking their wounds and could be a, a wounded animal, or they'll still be celebrating come that Wednesday and we just roll them over, hopefully. But, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm really confident with the running we've got in. I think, like Jamie said, Cambridge have got something to play for. I, I'm not too sure where the position is, but with the other two, I think Carlisle look as good as down, if I'm correct. I think the bottom of the league and it's quite a big climb for them now. And then um, it's Leighton Orient is the other one. I think their playoff ambitions may be for next season now. So I think we've got very winnable games here. There is a potential for us to slip up somewhere. But I've, like I said in the chat earlier, I think three wins will do it. I think if we can get three wins from the next five, I think we're up. So wherever they come from in that five, I'm happy. Uh, as, long as, as long as it gets us to that 90 points and we uh, get that second spot. Absolutely. I mean, just having a look at it, Leighton Orient, they're six points off the playoffs now, six points off Lincoln as well, who seem to be the best team in the world uh, recently. I genuinely don't know what's going on <laughs> up in Lincoln. Uh, Cambridge, yeah, 19th, they're three points clear of Port Vale, who are on quite a good run. So I think Cambridge will definitely need something. But underneath them is Burton, who can't win to save their lives. And Carlisle are on 27 points. Uh, they would have to, well, they've got 13 points to catch up in six games. Um, so fair play to them if they do that. Uh, I just hope it's not at our expense. Uh, so I'd say, yeah, they're, they're pretty much down as well. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting running, isn't it? Um, I, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm nervous about it. And first off, thank God we're not in the final of that trophy. Um, that would have completely derailed us, wouldn't it? Um, I mean, Wickham are marooned in mid-table and they've been really inconsistent. And if you ask them, would they rather be in the championship next season or be able to play at Wembley to win a cup that's not even counted as a senior fixture, I think I know which one they'd pick. So, yeah, when we were there at the start of the season, go, yeah, we want to win them both. No, <laughs> stay away from the pizza cup. Stay away from it. Uh, we've had a couple of comments uh, talking about our score predictions. Uh, you, you're ahead of the game. You've got a, another couple of minutes before then. Um, but, I mean, we've kind of mentioned it. But we've, we should probably talk about Pompey in more detail. Top of the league. They've played a game less than us. Uh, and they're also five points clear. I have a feeling they might win the league. Um, but if we can get a result, whether that be a draw or a win, that puts us in really good stead for minimum second. Um, and you never know. You never know in football, could we push for the title at the end? So, Jamie, I mean it's worrying. It's a long way. It's going to be a long day. It's going to be a long, long, long drive. 
Um, can't say I'm looking forward to it too much. But can Derby put a performance? Can Derby keep the run going? We've won, what, five of our last six, which is an unbelievable run of form. We've only conceded two goals in that time as well. Can we take it to the South Coast, put Pompey to the sword and get a result that we desperately, desperately need? No, I don't think we can. Oh, after all that? <laughs> no. Yeah, it was a great, it was a great build-up. It was an absolutely fantastic build-up. No, my thoughts are, and it, what I'm hoping happens, I'd absolutely love it to be a boring nil-nil and we just go shake hands, see you in the championship next season. That's what I would like. And if, if you offered me that now, I'd take it. My head thinks that potentially it's going to be a draw. I think that we'll probably see flashes of brilliance from both sides and it'll end up in a in a draw. Um, but my heart wants to nick it. It really does. I, I don't think that they're... They've obviously been fantastic all season. They're, they're so consistent. They're almost there. Um, but it would be great to just keep looking up rather than just looking over our shoulder. So... Yeah, if we could if we could nick it, that would be amazing. And I think we do owe them as well. We do owe them from what what they did at our place. So if uh, if karma works in that way, then then we'll go down to the the south coast and and bring back the three points. But if you offered me nil nil now, I'd, I'd I'd snap your hand off. I think this would be the only time in my life where I'd do a seven hour round trip for a nil nil and not be disappointed. <laughs> Uh, I, th- I think I'd take that. I think I'd take that. And talking of disappointing nil nils, I mean, remember Lincoln? How disappointed we were after that! What an mm. amazing result! A <laughs> nil nil draw against what nineteen seventies Brazil. Um, but Vic, I mean, what 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 are you thinking? Again, as we said, Pompey, really big game. Can we get something out of it? I think if we can keep Bishop quiet and we get Ibu Adams on Marlon Pack. I think we'll nick it. Honestly, I, I genuinely i have got this belief now where I think that we head into games where is we're not going to go there just to sit back. We're going to go there and actually go for it. Both teams are going to want it. Portsmouth win. They know that the title's theirs. We win. with two, The gap is two points and we'll be chasing them all the way to the end of the season. So there's a lot riding on it. Like I said, if we can keep their main people quiet, get, like, get the centre-backs on Bishop, Get Mar- get Ibu Adams literally two foot in Marlon pack out the stadium if we have to. Uh, I think we'll nick it honestly. I think we'll I think we'll win it, but I think it'd be like a two one if we're going to go for it. Um, I just I, I can't see us keeping a clean sheet there, but it's going to be an end to end game. It's going to be really fascinating, and I'm and I'm looking forward to it. Well, Marlon Pack's kept Derby in the championship before, so let's hope he drops an absolute stinker to help us get back up there again. Um, If you want to let us know your score predictions, let us know very quickly in the comments. We've got a few already, but it'd be good to get some more. Uh, We'll run through the boys first. So, Jamie, what do you reckon? I'm going to wish nil-nil into existence. Um, unless you want a one-one, do you want to see a score? Do you want to see please. a concede? It's up, up to you. Up to you, mate. Up to you. Yeah, please. Actually, yeah. I'd please. Quite, yeah, we're going, okay. going a long way. <laughs> let's let's yeah. go one-nil down. Let's go. Let's go one-nil down yeah. and equalize. <laughs> All right, you can have that. I'll, we'll, we'll go one-one, and I'll say CBT in his fluorescent orange boots to to get a goal for us. That would be amazing, <laughs> wouldn't it? Yeah, with his shirt that's six sizes too big, billowing in the wind as he celebrates in front of the uh, the away fans. Uh, Vic, what do you reckon? I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for a 2-1 win. I think we'll do it. Uh, I'm going to go with the CBT opener. And then I think Collins is going to come off the bench to score the winner. We we all we own that much. I mean, how many results have gone against us? I think it's about time we had one our way. So let's go for a two one win. Let's close the gap to two points. Let's go and chase that league title. Let's do it. Let's absolutely do it. Jim Johnson says we're going to win two one. Blackett Taylor of Washington with the goals. DCFC James says one nil late winner. Aaron Cash in. Uh, we've got Ben Chambers who says Derby are going to win two nil. Mendes Lang and Blackett Taylor with the goals. And uh, 4-1 Derby, says David Bloggs. Adams, two for Mendes, Lang and Wilson with a home goal by Connor Washington for them, um, which I'm sure will make Jamie's day. So, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's been a good episode. Very nervous, but I think we're going to nick a point. I think I think it's going to be 1-1. It's going to be 1-1. And I think we'll we'll score really, really late on. I think it's I don't know what I think we know what sort of goal it's gonna be. It's gonna be terrible, but it's gonna be great. I think it's gonna come off Sibley's nose and deflect off two players into the back of the net. 
and we'll, uh, we'll we'll head back up to the East Midlands thinking we've stolen something. And uh, yeah, we've got one more comment saying one all with Connor Hurrahan as well. So thank you so much for listening. I uh, really enjoyed the show so much. I almost forgot to do my own prediction. Uh, if you did enjoy, please do leave a like. Please do subscribe. I've had loads of subscribers recently. And if you do want to support us and help us bring more good content, we've got membership on YouTube as well. Um, and you can become part of the, the Rams Talk squad and we'll get some stuff sorted out and, and some community stuff later on when we work out what we're doing. Um, if you listened on Apple Pods or Spotify, please do rate us five star. We'd really appreciate that. On Spotify especially, we've got so many now. It's it's actually ridiculous considering all we do is waffle. So thank you so much. And uh, yeah, goodbye from me. We're on our way. Goodbye from me. The Rams are going up. Goodbye from me. You heard the lads. Come on, Darby. Let's come back with three points from the South Coast. Up the Rams. We'll see you soon.